So um, this is Coach Myers, everyone. And um, I'd like to ask you a couple of questions here, if that's okay with you. Absolutely. Go ahead. All right. So how's the season going so far, Coach? So far, so good, man. Considering the, a lot of the country is in disarray in regards to high school sports, I think. LaSalle and everyone responsible for handling the back end stuff, um, not just LaSalle, but with the PCL and the PIAA have done a great job of trying to garner as many games as possible for these kids. Um, you know, we've uh, secured three games already thus far outside the division, and now we've got the three Catholic League games. So um, as long as we take care of that business, we can move on to the playoffs. So the fact that we're able to, to get state playoffs is great. So. I think considering the past six to eight months, I think this is a, a big positive for everyone moving forward. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, so how has the loss of fans impacted games? Yeah, that's been the one missing link um, in regards to the atmosphere of a game. Um, anyone that's been to uh, any high school football game, especially the South, uh, understand the dynamic that the fans play in regards to the atmosphere of the game. And it – translates to the field uh, you know anytime our defense is on the field and we're having a home game and our fans are screaming it helps out tremendously just for the excitement level after touchdowns after big plays on defense and special teams it's just that whole link is the biggest thing that being said last week we're still uh, downtown east we ended up having uh, x amount of fans there um, so it depends upon what venue we're at um, and what's allowed um, but having the family support the fan support is something that we're very anxious to get back. Makes sense, yeah. So uh, how's the uh, St. Joe's prep game looking for tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, that's the big game every single year on the schedule. You know, we try and talk to the kids about, you know, handling your business um, leading up to that game. Um, this is a – we handle it like any other game in preparation because you don't want to change the way you do things throughout the week and get the kids all confused. At the same time, you got to let them know that this is the big robbery game and the young kids that have never played in it before have to rely upon the veterans and the seniors and the captains to be able to let them know that this is where all the marbles lie. You handle this, you most likely have a great path moving forward. Um, and the fact that there's so many intertwined relationships between everyone at LaSalle and Prep makes it for that much more of a rivalry. So um, all the parents that are alumni of both uh, help out in the week leading up. So. Um, it's a great tradition that I'm lucky to be a part of. I didn't have a dog in the fight on either side, and I'm uh, very, very, very happy and lucky to have been coaching LaSalle the past three years, and um, this is the big week every single season. Nice. Makes sense. Uh, so uh, can you tell me about your uh, experience with football? Yeah, so uh, growing up, I'm from Miami, Florida. I uh, was born and raised in Miami, Florida, um, and just backtracking even more before that, um, just by coincidence, both my sets of parents and their families are from Philadelphia and moved down to Miami separate. So my parents met in Miami, uh, but we have strong ties to the Philadelphia area. My grandfather was a North Catholic, grandmother was a little flower. Um, my wife and my, grand my grandfather, my wife's grandfather and my grandfather went to high school together, North Catholic. So there's a lot of uh, connections there, um, which don't get me wrong, it doesn't surprise me because the Northeast has you know, few and far between. You only need one or two connections to be uh, uh, connected with each other. So um, that's kind of my connection to Philadelphia. But with the football world, growing up in Miami, my grandfather was an NFL referee for 38 years. My that's uncle cool. played for the University of Miami from 85 to 89. So growing up, it was just in my blood, in my everyday life, and I couldn't wait to play. So when I got to high school, um, you know, that was my first time playing football in 10th grade. I was always a bigger kid. And, my parents helped me out of a uh, of a new sports of, of football wise um, because they were afraid I was going to get hurt. So, uh, high school was my first action on the field, and um, you know I was very fortunate to get the recruited at the University of Miami um, and played there for five years, and then um, you know just you know kept plugging away and trying to take care of my opportunities. And luckily, I got drafted to Denver and I uh, played three years there, and then got traded to Houston and uh, played seven years there. So. I'm a very fortunate and lucky guy to have uh, played that long without any major injury and setback. Um, but there's a lot of hard work that comes with that. Yeah, I, uh, I heard about your um, uh, career in the NFL. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, um, going back, like I said before, when I was at the University of Miami, I mean, you kind of take stages and set goals for yourself the older you get. And I try and convey this to the young kids. Um, you know, having a vision and having a goal and a dream of playing at the highest level, I think 
every kid should have if they want to have it. And I don't think any teacher or coach or parent should ever tell them otherwise. If that's a goal and a dream of yours, go and achieve it. You know, if someone says they want to be a doctor, you don't ever have someone telling you no, or if someone wants to be an accountant or whatever it is, if you have a dream of playing in the NBA, the NHL, the NFL, go chase it. I don't care if you're four foot nine, go chase whatever dream you want, because if you don't do that, you're going to regret it. That being said, I never really did think that I'd ever make it to the NFL. Um, I uh, just kept plugging away day by day, putting in the work, putting in the hard work, and I listened a ton. I was a sponge, and I would listen to the veterans around me, whether I was a sophomore in high school, listen to the seniors, or I was a freshman in college, listen to the juniors and seniors that have been there. Um, and then when I got to the NFL, I had a great uh, mentor, and whether he thought he was a mentor or not, um, Tom Nalen was a center back in the Denver Broncos, and he was the center for John Elway back in 97 and 98 Super Bowl runs. And I got drafted there in 2005, and he was a veteran, um, you know, kind of on his last leg in the NFL, and uh, just modeled every single thing he did. Um, so I, I had that ability wherever I was at to just look at who's been there, look at who's achieved a ton, and try and emulate that and instill it in my own work value. Um, and it worked for me. Um, that may not be the case for every single kid growing up, um, but it's definitely something that I think you have to put your nose to the grindstone, make a goal for yourself. Once you achieve it, you keep setting higher goals. So what brought you here to LaSalle? Yeah, so um, actually one of the uh, alumni that graduated last year, Brad Vespi, who was on the football team, uh, his dad uh, went to college at the University of Miami with my uncle when he was there. So a couple connections there. So when I first uh, retired from playing in the NFL, moved back, um, his dad, Mr. Vest Beach reached out to me a few times and was like, come and check Brad out, come and check Brad out, come help the team out. And finally, I kind of owned up to it and met Coach Steinmetz at one of the offensive line clinics back in 2018. Um, and I really haven't left since. Um, you know, they kind of hook, line, and sinker got me in there. And um, I've loved every second, you know, just kind of building relationships with the kids year in and year out and uh, just – seeing them improve progressively over the years. And it's just something that I always knew that I would love. Um, but like I said before, I never had any, you know, tangible dog in a fight with LaSalle. But now that I'm here, it's 10 minutes from where I live. And my kids are diehard Explorer fans now. So they're wanting to be able to go there down the line. They're still young, but um, I love the community. I love everything about it. And um, I think it's this first class that they come. Nice. Now, Coach, that's all the questions I have for you today, but uh, I want to thank you for your uh, time, and uh, good luck for the rest of the season. I appreciate it, Christian. Thanks a lot, bud. Of course.